Hi there, my name is Vic Vier. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon working for the NHS in central London. And I want to tell you about how I use nanotechnology to help me with tonsil operations. In the last few months, I've been using a medication called Purabond, which is actually a gel made up of lots of little peptides. Peptides are amino acids, like building blocks of proteins. So short sections of amino acids all strung together. So it's stuff that we have in our bodies all the time. These peptides are put into this gel, and when they've sat on top of an open wound, they're designed to reassemble themselves into a beta-pleated sheet, which covers the wound, protects it, and allows healing. Some people may not know what a beta-pleated sheet is because that's pretty much what surgeons and you know biochemists all think about. So a beta-pleated sheet is like uh, lots of strands of these molecules stuck together in a sort of zigzag pattern. The only way I could think of to describe it is by using this very expensive prop that I have here, which is basically a folded up bit of paper. So it's like those fans you see on Bridgerton, sort of that sort of thing. And these peptides hold together like this. So these sort of short sections of protein. And what they does is it covers the wound after you've made something. So if, if you're taking someone's tonsils out, there's an open wound there. We don't stitch it up afterwards. And so you're waiting for the skin to grow over it. If you put Purabond on there, these peptides reassemble themselves and turn themselves into a nano layer of a beta pleated sheet, this, this fan thing. And when that happens, it stops it from bleeding, we think. It also protects the wound, stops it from getting infected. And also, if you've got this extra layer, even if it's a small layer, you're sort of reducing the amount of pain the patient is experiencing. So, and the other great thing about it, it's just it's made out of peptides, stuff that we have in our bodies all the time. So we can squirt it in our mouths and drink it and eat it. And it shouldn't cause us any problems because it's just amino acids, basically. And we eat that every day when you have a steak or or like peanuts or something like that. So that's why it's relatively safe you could put it on these open wounds to allow the skin to heal because the way tonsil operations heal is that you take out the tonsils, there's a red raw area, a bit like having a large sort of this size ulcer on either side of your throat. What you want is for the skin to grow over that. And once the skin grows over it, you don't feel the pain. There's no chance of infection because it's not an open wound. If you imagine an open wound on your arm, if you stripped off the skin there, it could get mucky and get infected because there's no skin to protect it. This is like a really thin, sort of very simple gel that you can put on top of that to allow it to heal up. Now, to be honest, I use it in the nose as well after shrinking down turbinates. You can have a slight wound there as well. Uh, if you have, I tend to reduce the tongue base. So I'll go through it quickly. This is the back teeth are here, the tongue coming down like this. And sometimes there's extra tissue sitting on the back of the tongue called the lingual tonsil, not the palatine tonsils, which are left and right here, but the lingual tonsil here. And sometimes it's so big, it blocks your breathing. So they get sleep apnea and problems like that. I sometimes remove that, but it leaves a big open raw area on the back of the tongue, which is very painful to tolerate. It's very difficult to tolerate afterwards with eating and drinking, but I want you to eat and drink afterwards. So what I do is I put this Purabond stuff over the top of there and it protects it, gives you a protective layer, reduces infection, reduces pain, reduces bleeding. So I think it's useful, but I'm not saying is that it will cure all these problems. No one has any bleeding or pain or infections, any of those things. It's not true. You can still have these problems. What we're really doing is slightly reducing that risk. And I think if it's relatively harmless and it takes up just a little bit of the surgeon's time, then why not try it at least? So that's how I use nanotechnology, as it were, to help me with tonsil operations and other operations I do for snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. I hope you found that useful. Do take care. Bye-bye.